Sorry about that. Uh, wrong channel. One second. Welcome back to Streamer Love Connection. All right, bachelor number two, tell the ladies about yourself. Yes, yes, I'm Trix, a hacker turned streamer. My true identity is hidden, of course, for legal reasons. I assure you, I wear my emotions on my, well, face. Specialize in playing video games, I'm really not that good at for a living. Whoa, looks like lady number two has a question. Okay, like, first off, totally sounding sexy AF. So loving it, uh, Mr. Trix. And um, I guess I would just really like to like know what totally makes you unique. And uh, I would totally like to know how many abdominals you have. <laughs> so sure, I'm a variety content creator. Represent. I truly believe in the power of positivity. Other than that, I can't really think of anything else that would set me apart. Nope, nothing else. And also, I have four and a half abdominals. Oh, sorry about that. I just love that show. So many weirdos. Let me just get in here. You ready? Nope. Oh, ready. Nope. Nope. Ah, here we go. Go ahead, Tricks. I'll take, why is content creation important to me for 500 bob? All right. Creates a safe place, builds community, gives people an escape. What is the grid? That's right. Yes. Sorry about that. I just keep getting distracted. I, I, I think I got it this time. Subscribe now to Trix's only streamer. Oh, oh, God. Oh, no, no. Sorry, here we go. I have it now. I don't need to fit the clothing. Why can't fit the clothing, Billy? Why not give you the clothing? Well, I hope you enjoyed that footage, and I want to thank you for your consideration. Take a second and of course, guys, oh, for picking me oh. to be the new okay. berserk content creator. Oh. So excited! All the other people. Oh. oh, yeah, that one's uh, that, that's for another time. So, thanks again. Welcome, everybody, back to the grid. Good morning, good morning, hello, good morning, hello. What is going on, everybody? How's it going? Yeah. So we're doing what we did yesterday. Um, we're going to be letting chat build their own D and D campaign. Uh, and in doing so, hopefully a little bit of a tutorial on how to like do some stuff using roll 20 as the, uh, game board. So that, uh, I know a lot of people like want to try D and D and get into D and D. The hardest thing is trying to get a group. And trying to get a group all in the same place, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, doing using something like Roll Twenty is a super good because you can. Uh, it's a lot less commitment to be able to like jump online and play than it is to like go to somebody's house or drive or whatever. Now, in person is the best. There's no question about it. The energy and the proper facial reactions and stuff like that you can't beat. But at least this is one way to uh, get your feet wet. So yeah, we're going to jump in and we're going to do some more. Um, so we yesterday came up with uh, the concept from chat, which was like Planes of Redemption, because one of the, the first characters that it was Anne had thought of was like this goblin kind of thief guy <clears throat> who was bad, but something happened and now he's trying to be good or he has something good that he has to do or whatever. And now we're thinking like different different planes, different levels. So planes of redemption is what it's called. So we made some, uh, art for the, for it. So we got like our landing page art or whatever. So this will probably come into play later. These three, uh, kind of angelic looking things. And then we also made a map. Somebody came up with, uh, 
they wanted to do is said like a mob or something so somebody came up with uh like trees <clears throat> that are alive so we created these trends <clears throat> so these big guys here so we can we're basically coming up with everything we're coming up with like the stat block the uh character art the whole shebang so we come up with these guys here so they also come up with a uh kind of a special ability so these are based kind of like on a, like an awakened tree uh which let's just change that to say trent um yeah so and they wanted them to be able to like burrow underground hey jacob on facebook uh, burrow underground. So the way around that, because if we if we let these huge trees, there's five or six of them. If we let them burrow underground and move, then it's gonna leave huge holes everywhere and could destroy a sort of a whole area. Totally slept in. I'm late for work. Uh oh. Pedal to the metal, bro. Um. So we came up with an ability called replant. Uh, replant the trend can use movement to relocate from one place to another avoiding any obstacles or difficult terrain by phasing through the ground so instead of like tunneling and digging through the ground they're able to kind of like phase into and then travel and then phase back up so and then yeah we reduced the damage a little bit from what it was uh, just toned it down a little bit because it was more of a a hefty thing and we wanted to create a situation where there could be multiple so yeah, so we built the mob and then we built a situation, a map around it, um, kind of where they would be living. So we got positioned, um, let me build this grid down a little bit, <clears throat> we'll pass it here, down there. Wow. That's actually still pretty, uh, pretty, can I do it down there? Oh, okay. That's like nothing now. Move it up a little. Ah, oh, there's like no in between, huh? It's either really show up or don't show up at all. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, we built this map area. Our our adventurers coming in from here, so we give them some stuff to work with. It's a luscious green green forest, and then these trents are located roughly where there's dead trees, because uh, they kind of like suck the life out of the area around them. So we got them in an ambush situation, possibly. Um, and then for creating the map, we wanted to put a couple of different thing options in there for the players. So we got like this abandoned tent that's all torn up and ripped so you could leave some items or whatever in there. Um, here we have a statue with the head removed uh, and a bowl with some burnt flowers. The idea being is um, that they have to look in the area for the same type of flowers. They have to bring the flowers in the bowl while holding the head on the statue. And then that will magically make the, the head attached to the statue. And this pool will drain and, uh, for ladders going downwards. So that's something we just threw it all together, come up with an idea. I started Borderlands playing this game, which is D and D game. It's fun. Oh yeah. I thought it was like a shooter. Yeah, weird. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, okay, and then we and then Anne came up with a magic item. He's like, what if something was stolen or whatever? So go up with the idea of like this desert town. <clears throat> totally barren desert, however. Uh, this town has been able to survive and flourish because of this scepter. So the scepter here, the ball produces water, um, but it can only be uh, held by like the chosen one of the tribe, which they have to wear this gauntlet to activate the magics. So this gauntlet's been stolen, gone missing. <clears throat> And so the town is in dire need as it doesn't have any more water. Once the well runs dry, that's it. 
that's going to be like a quest or a mission we can have in there where they have to go find this gauntlet so that they can go back and uh, uh, give water back to the town. <clears throat> and then we have the character that Anne made. She wanted a goblin that was kind of like, uh, was was bad, like was some sort of thief. Um, but he's turning over a new leaf. You still shoot? LOL, but she's telling a D&D &D story and it's got a whole table talk function. Ah, okay. Cool, 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 cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um. Yeah, so this was a uh, character made and wanted so this gob weird goblin guy with like one arm or uh, one eye sorry well it was supposed to be two different colored eyes but this is what the AI generated after a couple of turns she stuck with so yeah i got this guy he's very very skilled thief used to do bad stuff something happened some sort of event changed him to either want to be good or is is understands he has to do some sort of good act of some some kind His name is 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 it Bluster Clink, uh, but likes to go as Izzy. And I mentioned a character she helped make. Yeah, so this is it. <clears throat> so I don't know why we didn't get access to add any spells. It's very weird. I don't know. Maybe I picked the wrong like subclass or something. Because I think she wanted to be assassin, so maybe that's why. There was no subclass stuff. And you can't select goblin in this, so I put a rock gnome, so. But she a goblin. <clears throat> so that's what we did yesterday. We came up with uh, a mob, a map, a uh, quest, and a character. So if anybody else wants to go next and like put out an idea for a quest or a map or a mob, a character, a special item or whatever and we're gonna create it we're gonna get the character art we're gonna get the description the stat blocks we're gonna make everything for it if anybody doesn't have anything then i'll create a, a map that i can maybe use at a later date ah yeah, I talked through how to use Roll20 as well, like how to move through the different layers. <clears throat> in fact, you can have your combat all set. This is all on the GM layer. So if they do get ambushed or whatever, I can right click layer and move it to token. And immediately now they will see this one on the token layer. So I could just drop them all on here. Actually, you know what? I think I can, can I select all of them? Token layer. So I can pop them all in the token layer just by selecting them all. <clears throat> so now if I do token layer and then I can hide them all back on GM. <clears throat> all right. Gonna open up our map maker, map maker 10,000. Just got here, BOB sounds good. Silly late boy. All right. So while we're waiting for people to come up with an idea, we'll make another map because you can never have too many maps. 
All right, so... Hmm. Let's see. Gotta be careful what I make, because I know that... Uh, Luke's watching, I don't want to spoil anything for him, so I can't really make any maps for my main campaign. Unless it's something way down the line. Yeah, we can make a... We can make a generic... Um, Like a hut, like a, um, like a hut in the forest kind of thing. Like a little house of some description. Oh, I don't want a river in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's change that. Forest flat, water, no water. Evergreen, let's go broadleaf. I don't know what that means, but. Um, evergreen clearing, what's that look like? Eh. All right, we can work with that. There's a couple of exits there. I want to fill in this this other side here just to indicate that that's probably not the way to go. So if you go items <clears throat> and up here, you can go to paint objects. So you can put a, a group of stuff down at a time. So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, evergreen trees. So we're going to pop these over here just to kind of indicate it's not an Invisible wall by any means, but it's kind of like indicating, okay, yeah, that's probably not the right way. <clears throat> okay, so let's clear out. We can just pop that over there. So let's draw out a, hmm, let's see. We're gonna do like a big cabin that is is actually used, so let's see what we got in here. Gingerbread house. And <laughs> <clears throat> a bedroom, great hall, hallway, latrine, pantry. With the cemetery, butcher shop, bakery. I mean, I guess they just a great hall and then we can put whatever we want in it. All right. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. The so objects, I don't want that there. This is going to be the entrance over here. Okay, got a little overhang, a little porch action. Good enough. Okay, it's not going to open up to some barrels though. So yeah, the AI kind of generates its own stuff. So this is going to be somebody <clears throat> living here, so we don't need the bar. Um, That's like a little beer keg thing. We don't need that. Is he going to have a piano? Meh. Nah. All right. The rest we can keep. The rest is fine. Just lighting's windows. Dining room, we might move somewhere else. Uh... Morning, Joel. The bus isn't even working today. It's just me and another guy, and I can't even do anything. Oh, wow. It's going to be a nice, lazy day for you. Lazy day. And Joel's got like five days off in a row. Whoa! Rise and shine, jump scared tricks. Time for some D&D, &D, they're handsome. 
Well, I got called handsome, so I'm going to assume that's Joel. Thank you for the 666. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah, last day shift. Oh, today's the last. Okay, okay. I thought yesterday was the last. Thank you for the 666, brother. Yeah, so we are making this a little, uh, this little cabin out in the wilderness here. Uh, does he want a full dining table? Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. All right, we need stairs. <clears throat> it's going to be a second floor. If it's a second floor, then I got to build another map, though. That's the only problem. Let's put a hatch to the basement because that's always, it's always interesting. Um, let's see. So trapdoor. No, it will be a hatch. There we go. We'll hatch in the corner. So what are you literally going to do then, Luke? Just sit on your phone all day? Like what what's the plan if you if you can't do anything? Random cabin in the woods with a cellar. I say you put a bunch of skeletons nailed to the wall. Why? Then there's no mystery to it. You just walk in, you're like, oh, look, this is one of this is this. That's no fun. The skeletons nailed to the wall should be in the basement. If somebody makes it down there. I got a few items I can do, but not a lot. So after I do that, then I'll be doing nothing. Boo! An old hermit necromancer skeletons in the basement. Skeletons in the basement. Yeah, if a normal person pops by, he doesn't want to give away his, uh, or she doesn't want to give away her, her stuff, you know? Um... <clears throat> Maybe do some stairs up. <clears throat> A little two story action. Unfortunately, that means I'd have to do a second level map. But whatever, this is just for messing around. Yeah, and the sellers, the people start to wonder if the thing that did this will come back. So they're on edge, but nothing comes and it's just an empty cabin. Yeah. All right. There's stairs up. We got three levels of this now. So we got a basement and then we got an upstairs. Winter. Potted plants. Yeah, the contrast of everything being all lush and pretty up here would be nice with the death under under uh, underneath. A noise contrast. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay, so anyway, furniture-y stuff in here. Get this. You always gotta have like a nice bookshelf or something, you know. Bookcase. Bookcase with books along the walls here. For reading at your leisure. Reading at your leisure. <clears throat> Maybe a desk over here, you know? People, people, like, they all needed desks to write their letters. 
or maybe a little tinkering bench. Yeah, it's a fancy desk right there. Maybe I'll just do it kind of at the corner. Now we'll move this up a little bit. Maybe this make this more of a central, central thing. Hey, good morning, Doug. Good morning, Mr. Doug. Uh, let's see. We'll have a little chest of goodies for his regular stuff or her, his, whatever, whoever is in here. There we go. Uh, maybe we should put something on top of that trap door so people don't know right away when they come in. Um, let's see what, what we'd cover it up without being too a nice, a nice rug. Oh, I can't, can't do that. It's unfortunate. Random to have a statue in the corner. Or a pedestal. What about a nice hand coming out of the ground? <laughs> Don't even worry about it, guys. Nothing to see here. It's fine. It can just be storage. It can just be food storage or whatever. Uh, actually, you know what? In mentioning that, maybe this should be a little bit more. So let's do this. Let's make this a little bit more here. And we'll have a little... Um, butchers kind of thing down here so like uh butcher butcher's table finish butcher's block there we go and you can't really see the ah that's better there we go Somebody likes their meat, right? You don't know what their meat is exactly, but somebody likes it. Butcher's knife, a little butcher's knife on there. I like how detailed the map builder is. Like you can literally put little items on there. It looks too placed. I gotta, I gotta angle it a little bit. There we go. <laughs> All right, we got our desk. We got our little thingy there. Oops. Our door in the front. That's huge. That's a huge painting. Why is it so huge? That's what she said. Ayo. Painting my lord. Okay, that works. You can just get a little painting action in there. So you guys all up to speed for tomorrow night? Hmm? Everybody up to speed? Not me. <laughs> You're busy, man. You know what I'll do right now, right this very second? I'm going to uh, give you guys um, Especially for Joel, who has been able to watch any of it. 
I will give you the story so far. So I send these guys a recap every time. So I'll read you guys um, from the initial outset, episode one, two, three, like just the recaps of it. And then you can know exactly kind of like what the dealio is. <clears throat> About 200 years ago, there was an event. Uh, cataclysm that eradicated the known world of magic. The world was split, fractured into islands across the globe. Nature and details of this event was mostly unknown, as almost all of the temples of worship and houses of history were destroyed. The world now is split into islands, some small, that could handle only a few hundred inhabitants and some big enough to support multiple towns. Travel and communication between the islands was impossible. Many had attempted to construct ships and traverse the calm waters, but each time the ships would get a certain distance from the islands, the water almost seemed to pull them below. It was like the ship suddenly became made of rock and fell to the bottom with no resistance. The inhabitants of this world finally accepted that they must build what lives they can on what had been given to them in the cataclysm. Year 50 AC, after Calamity, one fateful morning, some people across the world woke up feeling different. It seems that magic had been released upon the world once again. However, it seemed that the Weave's strength was now limited, as it only affected some people, and regardless of those trying to teach others in this new magic, this was not possible. From that day forward, any child born from a magic user was born with the Weave inside them and blessed with magical abilities. Later in that year of 50 AC, after this miracle had happened, a boat began appearing at each of the islands. A large ship, unlike anything the people from the islands had ever seen before. People wearing prestigious armor and magnificent silken robes had come with a proposal. Each year, the ship would come and take four of the inhabitants with them. In trade, they'd be able to request special supplies to be brought with the next cycle. They were told that these four would have an opportunity to win a contest and live like kings on what they called Centaurium, a supposed mainland. The island of the winner, island of the winner, would receive rewards that would make sure the island would never have to struggle again to survive, but instead would flourish. Each island would have their own ways to select their participants, but nonetheless, each year the ship would arrive and the trade was made. Episode one. So this is just sort of a recap of what happened in each episode. So episode one, new contestants from the Northern Islands finally began the journey. Atlas and Jack came aboard with full teams of four from their islands. Darius and Felix both sent by themselves without supporting members. They were given a unique opportunity to present themselves as a group and not disclose this information to everyone else. Darius then immediately disregarded this and announced that he was sent alone because he was so amazing. Uh, they were all enjoying a com comfortable sleep, minus Atlas, when an event occurred. Everyone woke up, except for Atlas, on the beach. After some expert tinkering, Felix was able to finally bring Atlas out of stasis. Felix was also reunited with his best friend and construct that seemed to resemble a beautiful metallic fox. After Jack used some special gauntlet to propel himself to the highest point of the beach, he was able to see another body halfway up the beach. Everyone met this half-orc Dorhan. He was severely injured, missing a leg, and covered in a strange blood-like substance. He conveyed an urgency to need to protect the contestants of the tournament. After searching some of the beach, they discovered a cart with chests that seemed to have a collection of items from the ship. The whole group decided to investigate a strange bell, and Jack decided to ring it three times. At first, it appeared to not have caused any reaction, then shortly after, two figures appeared at the beach. A massive orc holding two large battle axes and a humanoid figure. Upon unexpectedly seeing you all, he questions if you have an invitation. He smiles, and one at a time, his hand starts searing with flames. Episode 2. The group was left at somewhat of a standoff at the beach with two individuals that had yet to identify themselves. A human that has magic abilities and a British-looking half-orc. Darius presented himself to be the voice of the group and tried to deceive the human, pretending to be from the Merchant's Guild. 
humans seeing right through the lie and explaining that the Merchant's Guild hadn't come through these parts in decades. The human seemed ready to initiate a more aggressive approach until he discovered the group had in their possession keys for entrance to the tournament. Upon confirming this by viewing the crystal mounted in Darius's chest, he left the group alone and seemed to start searching for something across the beach with the half-orc companion. The group swiftly left the area via a dusty path lined by trees, seemingly from a surrounding forest. Atlas noticed some interesting foliage off the path and ventured to check it out. The group were then attacked by what appeared to be some sort of undead plant-based monsters. After a scuffling, with much of Darius's blood and lightning bolts from Jack, uh, the group managed to best the undead to uncover a building that they seemed to be protecting. Jack took a defensive position in a nearby tree to watch for any danger while the rest of the group ventured inside. Once inside, Atlas had a conversation with Dorhan to uncover that he was birthed in Centaurium and lived all his life in a barracks trained to serve his days escorting contestants across the seas. The conversation was cut short. Dorhan started feeling a searing pain in his head and forced him to take time to recover. Inside was a deserted old chapel seemed to worship the god of love, Amoro. After some investigation from Felix, he uncovered something strange about the altar, and Atlas found a musical instrument with some musical writings. Darius played this music and was filled with an unknown feeling of magic that he hasn't felt before and uncovered a secret entrance to somewhere below the chapel. Darius immediately entered the entrance while Atlas tried to convince Jack to come with him to see what they uncovered. Jack decided to remain vigilant outside the chapel as the rest of the group ventured into the opening and get ready to follow Darius to see what lies below. See how I nicely worded that, Luke? That you just decided to remain vigilant and not just stick yourself in a tree for three hours? Uh, episode three. Jack scouted the beach to confirm that the orc and human that you met was not planning on following for surprise attack. He found them fully engaged in something in the southwest corner of the beach among some bushes. Then entered the chapel to find Dorhorn gathering himself and was told the rest of the party had proceeded down the ladders under the statue. The party now fully gathered, minus Dorhorn, under the chapel in some sort of highly decorative temple. Presented with five pedestals with smooth stone spheres on top surrounding a circular platform. The party worked together to find a way to reveal hidden symbols on the spheres and Darius went into a trance as he activated each sphere. Atlas was pulled into the circular platform, and a story was told in the form of an illusion seemingly fueled by energy shooting from Atlas through the spheres. This showed the world pre-cataclysm as five points appeared with some figures around each point. Energy shot from these five points into the center and shot upwards to the stars. Something of enormous size then fell to the world. During this time, Atlas was in stasis and was seemingly shown memories, some of which were not previously in his databanks, including what he believes to be his creator. As soon as Atlas awoke, an explosion of energy burst from him, knocked everyone back and shot upwards to the ceiling. Everyone found themselves fully healed and a slice of vine from an undead thornling that Atlas had had come to life. He proceeded to find a secret tunnel that a mass of undead had been trapped in. After killing the zombies and pushing forward, found what looked like some sort of mining area. A huge metal piece of equipment that seemed to act as some sort of double door, but unusable from this side. Darius found some seeker stones, which Felix gave to Jack and Reen. Darius also found a letter from one of the four men to another, asking for help due to some issues of threat from a lord. Just as Jack and Felix noticed some large webbing in the area, Dorhan came running down the passageway and jumping into the area on both legs, seeming ready to fight. It was accurate. Yeah, totally accurate. Uh, so episode four. So this will catch you right up to where we are. So they found themselves reunited with Dorhan, who had somehow regained his leg that was previously missing. Dorhan explained that he had been hit by a red beam of energy that shot through the floor in the church, and that energy rigored the lower half of his leg. After some time spent in an intersection of this newly found mine, it was discovered but there was a letter referencing communication between Felix's father on his island and the foreman of this mine. Talks of his island helping a lord Venmoria 
reached some sort of quota for ore, which seemed to have been going on for a very long time. We all decided to ignore Dorhan's advice and ascend to the surface to find a way to the tournament and Centaurium, and instead decided to explore deeper into the mine. Before leaving, Dorhan suggested he check the integrity of all the keys, as he seemed to fear something bad could happen if they were damaged. He confirmed with everything with everyone that each key seemed to be fully intact. Based on his previous experience, the group chose Felix to lead them into the mine. With this newfound information about his father, he rushed ahead looking for clues as to what this all means. Bell followed a path that seemed to have large webs high up in the corners in the ceiling that led into what seemed like a large living quarters for probably the miners. Atlas had a conversation with Doron and gained some information about Centaurium and some other items he wished to know, as well as checking how genuine Doron seemed to be. It was discovered that there was an upstairs, and after eventually breaking through a barrier that had been placed at the stairs, they found a sleeping area with some bones scattered, with glass shards, and a letter referencing some artifacts and potentially a magic mirror. After inspecting the mirror, Felix and Atlas did not seem to find any magic indications. Atlas did hit the mirror and caused a large crack in it. Shortly after, Atlas observed some movement in the mirror that did not seem to match what he was seeing in the room, but could not recreate this. Jack heard some whispers in the lower dorms, asking why you were in the mine and that you don't belong, seemingly coming from all directions, but was unable to ascertain exactly where they were coming from. After fully flipping the whole room in the upper dorms, Felix picked the chest and discovered a strange looking device with a handle on one end and a broken star shape on the other. You all settled down for the night. After Atlas and Darius, both investigating the keys in their chests. Jack decided not to rest and stay posted in the lower dorms. And during this time, he had an experience. And if you want to see or hear that experience, you're just going to have to go on YouTube and watch the, uh, the end of the episode. Mwahaha. Mwahaha. All right, so back to this. So that's basically the catch up without all the details and the absolutely cool role play, funny role play that happens in between. <laughs> There's just a funny part is that the entire, like the entire campaign was supposed to be them doing this, this tournament, this contest. And I have to say that I feel like zero of them care about the tournament or trying to get to the tournament. <laughs> it's very strange. None of them seem to care. Like, yeah, let's check out this mine. Let's go deeper. And Doran's like, well, we have to get to Centurium where the, where the contest is. Like, that's the whole point of you being here. And they're like, do, 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 don't care about that. Just going to go to this random mine place. Come on, man. Rohan's just trying to do his job. Anyways. Um, okay. So. So we got our table. We got a little chest, a little action to go downstairs. So this is a pretty standard setup here. Yeah. He doesn't need to rush us. Rush you. What, you think the tournament's just going to wait? So you're just like, yeah, you know what? They'll just wait until we get there. That's very self-absorbed, Luke. I must say, very self-absorbed. <sighs> They'll get there and be like, oh, tournament's over. Yeah, and then they'll all be sent back to their islands with nothing. It'll all be for nothing. The horn is on our time. <laughs> oh man. Brutal. So, yeah. So we got our main kind of cabin -y thing here. Now, the outside. Let's see. Do we want to put anything on the outsides? Or is this just going to be a straight thing? 
maybe a well a well is always good because if if you have a map with a well it can be different things it can literally just be a water source or it can be an access to something else so let's do that your standard old well with bucket yeah let's do it we'll just do this to the side here hmm. let's just move this tree a little bit here Gorhan just wants Get his job done, man. He can't get his job done because you guys keep dicking around. I don't want to save my island and get them lots of resources. I want to see what's what's down in this mine somewhere. Come on, man. Come on, man. Uh, okay, so we got that there. Uh, let's see. I guess we should have a little rock or two scattered. <clears throat> Actually, a little painting of rocks might be the way to go. Just make it really thin. Or not so dense, not thin, but not dense. Just a little. The paint function is nice because it makes it a little bit more natural looking. Rather than me placing specific rocks everywhere. Morning just woke up. Coffee time. Nice. I actually am out of coffee. I might run down. There might be more coffee left. I don't think Miss uh, Trix used all the coffee. Um, let me just check and see if there's coffee downstairs. Um, while I do that, if you guys want to think of a character or um, anything you want me to build... We'll get the supplies, LOL, or Jack will stay on this mainland. What if he doesn't have a choice? You ever think about that? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to see if there's more coffee left. I'll be right back. Ugh. Got an idea of a character? Oh, yeah? Spill the beans. What you got? I gotta change my glasses. This one has my computer prescription in it. That's better. All right, so... I think this this will be fine. I think for generic cabin in the woods. So let's save it as, um, we're going to go, oh, I can't actually, you know what? Oh yeah, here we go. Okay. Maps. Okay. So actually, you know what? Um, let me just change over to this because I don't want you guys to see the names of the other maps that I've done. And look at the races. Okay. No worries. OK. 
Okay, so this will be um, cabin in woods. So the cool thing about this as well is that these ma this map builder, you can export it to whatever format you want. So there's lots of different ones that people use. There's foundry is a big one. Um, lots of different ones anyway. So we're doing rule 20 perspective. So walls perspective is interesting. It changes the dynamic of the walls inside the builds to make it look more 3d or not. And there's just a straight top down, which get rid of the walls completely. So I like the 3d gives a little bit more depth. Um, and then export. And we're doing it in the stream campaign. So we're going to change this to, to cabin in woods. All right. Perfect. Let's go ahead and get out of this. So we're going to add this to our campaign. Okay. So again, a little refresher. This is kind of like a tutorial as well as, you know, building it up. So if we want to add a new map, we're going to go to our page toolbar where we control our pages. I'm going to create a new page and then click on it to go to it. So yesterday I talked about these level, these layers, you got to make sure you're on the right layer. If I put my map on this token layer, it means that it's, it's too high up. It's, it interacts with all the tokens. The map layers got to go on the map that way. I won't affect it when we're moving other stuff. So we're on the map layer. Let's go in and drag our new map out into the area. So I'm going to do something different, but normally you could just do, um, uh, just page size and it would adjust the page to fit the map, but I have a special script where if I just copy this and pop it in here. So this is, if you have a subscription with roll 20, you can use APIs. Uh, and so it export. Yeah, it's a thing. So. You guys want to know more about it and then I'll go into details. Um, I like to turn down the opacity of the grid because the grid kind of overtakes everything. So anytime you want to change anything specific to the map only go up here to the little cog wheel beside the map you want to change. So I went to opacity, change this. I usually do the cell width. I usually move it down just a little bit 0.75 just to make the squares a little bit smaller. So if you want to, bigger map. You just make your squares smaller and build it. You know what I mean? Fancy. Yeah. Right. Fits it in perfectly. All right. So we have this map here now. Um, so this is going to be cabin in the woods. We don't know why it's there yet. We don't know what it's for, but it is what it is. All right. And this tool does have something awesome called dynamic lighting, but I don't need to use it because everybody in my campaign, like a holes all chose characters that have dark vision. So it's not as fun and cool to present these strange atmospheric areas because you can see for 60 feet in the dark anyway. <laughs> so I haven't really bothered using, uh, dynamic lighting, but if you do this fog of war thing over here, that's what, um, you're going to use. So fog of war, you hide whatever area you want. So for example, if we cover this section, Enable fog of war. So if we cover this section, actually it's all revealed right now. Hold on. 
So it's fully revealed right now. So if you want to hide, you would go like this, click and drag it. And now we can see it's a little bit darkened. Uh, so what will happen is when the players come in this area, this part will be blacked out. So if I rejoin this player. Oh, I'm not moved. Dang it. I had to move. I have to move myself to that map. This is a good, good lesson though, whenever you are moving. So I'm seeing this right now because obviously I'm the GM and I can click on any of this as a player. They won't have access to this, obviously. So when you're moving your players, um, if anybody logs in, the players are only seeing this little banner here. That's what they're seeing. So wherever I put this, that's what they're going to see when they log in. So if they're going into the cabin in the woods area, you drop it in. And so when the players come in, that's what they're going to come into. Whatever area that banner is on. Okay. So as you can see, our fog of war that we applied, we applied it here because when they come in the area, they obviously can't see inside. So that's one way you can use it sort of in a, in a limited aspect. And then when they go in and they open the door, that's whenever you can open up the fog of war. So that's how that works. Pretty easy. And then also you'll, what you'll see me do in the campaign quite a bit is mainly because of Luke. Um, he is the one that's usually all over the fucking place. So what you can do is, um, if the main players are here and say, for example, Luke wants to run over to like this map here by himself. Um, then what you can do is when you have this up, instead of moving the entire, it sounds pretty easy to say, <laughs> well, once you do it a few times, I'm only switching back and forth to show you guys. You don't normally have to switch back and forth. Like you literally do this, click on fog of war, hide area, drag it over the area. That's it. That's that part hidden now. So it is pretty easy. Um, and then when they walk inside, you just click on fog of war, reveal area, and then you draw over the area that you want revealed. And now it's revealed again. So that whole switching back and forth thing was just so I could show you what it looks like from a player perspective. Um, but as I was saying, if somebody like Luke wants to, I want to run down this hallway and I want to go in this room and then I want to go back there, but wait, I check this and then I go back downstairs. So instead of moving the players, because not everybody is leaving, say only Luke is leaving or whatever, you go down and grab their name. Your player's names will be down here. You grab it and you drop it. So now that specific player only is in that map. So if I was to switch to player, it's going to register me on that map. I'm going to see that map. The rest of the players are only going to see this map. Also, why did you use label fog of war and not dynamic? Well, dynamic lighting is a little bit, I used the wrong phrase dynamic. So dynamic lighting sets the character's view forward. So say you go into a complete dark room. Um, if you have say. 60 feet dynamic lighting will be this little cone that goes out for your character in front of you on the map. And as you move, the cone moves with you and only uncovers what you see. So like that's the dynamic lighting where it's kind of live. Um, the fog of war is like covering and uncovering areas. The dynamic lighting is something that like literally like moves with you and lives with you. Um, so yeah, this is how I have to control whenever Luke and stuff go in different areas. I have to pull their name into a different map. Then I got to go over and manage what they're doing and then go back over the other one, manage what the other players are doing. <clears throat> and then when he decides to, decides to rejoin the group, you go up into this, where he is, where you've put him, you grab him, 
and drop them back into the players tab. And now all the players again are back in the same, in the same banner. Okay. Before now, I've never heard the term fog of war. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. That's, that's basically what it, the whole concept of like areas you can't see and being revealed is like the fog of war. Dynamic lighting is just something that like live changes as you go. <clears throat> like if you were to, I don't know, there's a torch at the end of the hall and you shoot a fireball at it and it lights a torch. Now all of a sudden that area will then be uncovered. So that's how that goes. All right, cabin of woods, we get the trench home, starting thing. Okay. So Joel said he had an idea for a character, got an idea of a character. So Joel, you just got to figure out what race you want, or you can just tell me and I can tell you what race fits your, your character. And if somebody's just coming in wondering what we're doing, we're kind of building a campaign. Well, chat's building a campaign. We're just building random stuff, like a random map or a quest or an event or um, character item. And then once we get a whole bunch of stuff, we're going to create a story throughout it, piece it all together. Um, and up here, map info. This is something that I like to do. So cabin in the woods. So this handout, this basically this little journal thing is anything specific to this campaign. So I can add a character. I can add a handout. So this is a handout, which is a note for myself. So only I'd be able to see this. So cabin in the woods. And if you want, you can attach a file to it, which would be the maps. It doesn't really matter, but this is down here where you'd write, like you describe the scene, right? Like lush forest, scattered rocks, blah, blah, blah. So you'd write everything in there. Any details pertaining to what's in the, the building or whatever. Cause you got to remember you might build this map and then it might be like two months before you actually use it. So, um, it's good to make notes as to what your ideas were while you're in there. And in that way, click and drag it under map info right there. And in that way, when we do come across it, like, okay, this, I'm going to use this map. Now we click on this, click on cabin in the woods, and now you can read your details. So it keeps all your notes in one place. And if you just double click right here, you can keep it right there. So we need to refer to it quickly. Just double click it, read your shit, double click it again. It's really handy for like, I have a list of the characters stats and stuff. Um, so I just keep it up here and then like, if I need to know something about them real quick, I'll just double click it and be like, blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah, that's right. Double click. So, okay. So there's that. So Joel hasn't come back with a character yet. So I'm just thinking if there's something that I need for my campaign that wouldn't give anything away to Luke. See, there is a little something. Mm. I don't think I need a map for that. Yeah, I can't really do anything live that's for the campaign. You know, do you want to do I get any spoilers? You mean leave just tell me? No, no, I don't need you to leave. 
No, it could be anybody. So, does anybody have a thought uh, for a character, a mob, a monster, um, a situation, a magic item, anything they want me to build? Or it's all going to be a component of this overarching uh, player, or sorry, viewer campaign. Ara Cockra, what is that? Is that not a bird? I don't think you can be a bird. Uh, no. I don't know. It's an eagle print. Yeah, no, that must be that must be one of like the weird DLCs or something. That's not like a normal character. <laughs> That's not a normal character for sure. <laughs> Where did you? How did you randomly find something that's like not a normal class or a normal race? Yeah. Yeah, like if you so the normal characters or the normal races I should say would be Asimar, Dragonborn, Dwarf, Elf, Gnome, Half Elf, Half Orc, Halfling, Human. And tiefling those are like those are the kind of like the core ones i don't know i went on a DD thing show me the races it might just be a list of every race possible which really you can make any race you can make you know you could make a i don't know freaking hill giant or something but it's not like normal okay i'll make something with a halfling Okay. So we'll go halfling. So first of all, let's go. Um, what type of halfling do you want? Like what kind of like class? Is it going to be a fighter? Is it going to be a spellcaster? Uh, and we'll make some art for him first. And that will give us kind of like a feel for, for what he's like. Is he in like an alchemist type? Is he a rogue? Is he a... Halflings are small. Um, I don't know if that influences your decision or not. Oh, sorry, fighter for the area. Oh, a fighter. Okay, you already said that. Okay. Like him to use will be a short sword or dagger for normal size, but a two tender for him. Okay. All right. Let's see. Um. Let's see here. All right. So a halfling holding a long. We'll call it long sword for him, but it'll actually just be a short sword. Is he a clean, rough and ready? Is he is he like a clean shaven person, or is he a rough and ready being through the being through the trenches a little bit? They make a warlock, but his patron is new to be a patron, so they're both learning how to do it. So he's like lead warlock to this page <laughs> trenches okay nothing holding a 200 long sword
has battle scars and standing on a battlefield at night with lightning behind style all right let's see what it comes up with mm, he's been through some stuff man <laughs> all right let's get a name for him so halflings are pretty open for names it's that's almost like human names you can pretty much come up with whatever um if you want me to just kind of google a few let's do a halfling names The short Odo Lar Odo. Oh, it didn't take too long. So, any of these stand out to you? Ooh, yo, I love this one. He looks like a kid with a huge sword. This one's kind of cool too. Good eye, buddy. Looks pretty cool. That's dope. Bottom right. Yeah, okay. So let's do one variation of the bottom right just to see if we get anything a little edge better. But I think that one looks sick. Sick. So yeah, we got, uh, if you want any names... Um, El Elden. That's kind of cool. Here, Elden Marmadas, Oldfur, Gardner, Chubb, Millbridge, Hamsum, Tea Leaf, Ostgood. Ostgood kind of sounds good. Elden Ostgood. You can tell me something different if you want something different. Uh, let's see what we got. Ooh. Yo, this one up here. I like the top right. That looks sick. He's got like the battle scar across his head. The like the long sword is basically like on fire. This one's a little bit too magical, like it's floating in front of him. This one, the face looks a little bit too skinny. Yeah, top right. Elden Ostgood. Okay, perfect. Yeah, this top right looks sick. All right. So let's grab this one. All right, let's save it. We're going into stream campaign. This is going to be for tokens. This is Elden Osgood. All right. So to make the token, we go over here, rolladvantage.com forward slash token stamp. And we're going to pop our, we're going to pop our image. Stream campaign, uh, tokens right here. Gonna download that. Needs to be a tank AC of like 21. Yeah. I don't like it re, re changes all my default downloads. Stream campaign, tokens, finish tokens. Oh, then 
mouse good. Save. <sighs> All right. So now we got our art for this guy. So as they come to the tournament that's already started, they hear the roar of a crowd as they go spectators to see what appears to be a child fighting this massive orc. Yeah, right. There you go. So we got our we got our character art. Got a character art, we got our token. Looks sick. All right, so here we go. We're going to make your character now. Elden Ostgood. Okay, so we got Halfling. So you automatically get two dexterity for being a Halfling. Um, are you going to be... So now you get to check, check your alignment. So Lawful Good. Basically, you get kind of like two sections. You're going to be Lawful, Neutral, or Chaotic. And then you get to be good, neutral, or evil. So lawful, you know, you're going by the rules, following the laws. Neutral, you're in the middle. Chaotic, it's just like it's all over. You don't really care about the laws. Do whatever. You're up being told the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Screw that orc. <laughs> hey, Adam over on YouTube. What's going on, brother? How you doing? All the chit chat's going on over Twitch if you want to hang out there. Uh, that's where everybody is. If not, it's all good. You can hang out there too. Chaotic good. Okay. Sounds good to me. The languages you can speak right common and halfling. Uh, lucky when you roll one on an attack roll ability check or save and throw, you can reroll a die. You must use new roll. Brave your advantage on saving throws against being frightened. You move through any space of any creature that is of a size larger than yours. Okay. So sub race. Uh, let's see, light foot. <clears throat> what does that mean? What, what does that give you? Light foot is extra charisma, stout half. Oh, you'd be stout, obviously. Stout halfling. Yeah, because that would give you like the extra constitution. So extra health. You have advantage on saving throws against poison and you have a resistance against poison damage. So you're brave, you're stout. Perfect. All right, classes. So for your type of class, you could be, um, if you want to be beefy, you're probably looking more like a fighter or a paladin. Um, if, if you're looking for that, like bulky, two-handed sword kind of situation. Barbarian doesn't wear armor usually, so that's not like an armored one. So you're probably looking fighter. Uh, Paladin can use two-handed weapons as well. Nimble fighter, okay. Battle master fighter would be dope, yeah. So skill proficiencies. So, <laughs> so for proficiencies, acrobatics, animal handling, athletics, history, insight, intimidation, perception, or survival. I'm thinking survival, maybe this guy likes survival and perception, maybe. I feel like he's been on his own a lot. Yeah, there's something about the little guy being all tough and beefy. It's just cool. Grew up alone in the forest, surviving in a harsh world for athlete. Okay, sounds good. So we'll do survival and 
probably probably perception if he's out surviving by himself so fighting style so great weapon fighting So we're going to go, we're going to choose this for you. We're going to choose great weapon fighting. So basically when you roll a one or two on a damage die for your attack, you get to re-roll it, which is very, very powerful. Survival is meant for stuff as well. Perfect. Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to choose that for you unless you specifically wanted something else, but that's really, really powerful. There's nothing like having a sword that does like a, like a a one to 12 damage and you rolling a one. So being able to roll that is huge. So second wind, you basically get yourself, you get like a self heal. You can use once per long rest. Uh, and then we'll give you some like basic equipment. So as for picking your points, we're going to do what's called standard array. So, um, I'm assuming most damage possible. So that would be your strength and then health, right? So strength, health, dexterity. You won't be very charismatic. So actually charisma is probably below wisdom. Yeah. So super strong, super healthy, dexterous, and then your intelligence is okay. Wisdom is average and charisma not so good. Because if he's been kind of like growing up in the forest, he wouldn't have been interacting, wouldn't be very social. Okay. And his background. Yeah, being alone doesn't show as well as others. Okay. So he would be a hermit. Um, so we get to choose an extra language. So if you're a hermit. So it's probably going to be one of the other races. So yeah, you can choose a, another language, which is quite a few languages. <laughs> um, you kind of probably looking at another race language, like draconic, dwarvish, elvish, gnomish, giant, goblin, infernal, orc, something like that. Vicious attacker lets you roll damage twice. And you pick the highest roll. Nice. Orc so you can talk shit. Okay, sounds good. Orc. So life of seclusion. I was searching for spiritual enlightenment. I was partaking of communal living in accordance with dictates religious order. I was exiled for a crime I didn't commit. I retreated from society after a life altering event. I needed a quiet place to work. I needed to commune with commune with nature. I was a caretaker of an ancient ruin or relic. I was a pilgrim in search of person, place, or relic of spiritual significance. Retreated from society after a life altering event, perhaps life altering. Okay. The personality traits, nice as I rarely speak, preferring gestures and the occasional grunt. I'm utterly serene, even in the face of disaster. The leader of my community has something wise to say on every topic, and I'm eager to share that wisdom. I feel tremendous empathy for all who suffer. I'm oblivious to etiquette and social expectations. I connect everything that happens to me <laughs> to a grand cosmic plan. I often get lost in my own thoughts and contemplation, becoming oblivious to my surroundings. I'm working on a grand philosophical theory and love sharing my ideas. Um, I've been isolated for so long. I rarely speak, rarely speaks. Yeah. That's what I was going to say based on what you were saying before. Um, so that's Christmas solo. Yeah. 
I'm oblivious to etiquette and social expectations is probably another one, right? He's buying, being by himself a lot. Okay. So ideals, great or good. My gifts are meant to be shared with others. Oh yeah, you said, okay, chaotic. Free thinking, inquiry, and curiosity are the pillars of progress. That would be your chaotic. Uh, Self-knowledge, if you know yourself, there's nothing left to know. Free thinking. Bond. Nothing is more important than other members of my hermitage. I entered seclusion to hide from ones who might still be hunting me. I'm still seeking the enlightenment I pursued. I entered seclusion because I lost, I loved someone I could not have. Should my discovery come to light, it could bring ruin to the world. My isolation gave me great insight into a great evil that only I can destroy. We don't have to do these, these are kind of optional, but. Broken hearted halfling. Here we go. Sorry, how would you be able to have any conversation with this character? If all he prefers occasional grunt, or can he speak, but just not. Oh, he can speak. Yeah, he can speak. It's more just like he'd rather not. And he'd rather just give a little gesture like, hey, do you want to go there? And he'd be like, oh, okay. Or just little short words kind of thing. Loved an orc woman who couldn't love him. That's why he knows orcs. Ah, good plan. Uh, his flaw. Now that I've returned to this world, I enjoy its delights a little too much. I harbor dark, bloodthirsty thoughts that my isolation and meditation fail to quell. I'm dogmatic in my thoughts and philosophy. I let my need to win arguments overshadow friendships and harmony. I'd risk too much to uncover a lost bit of knowledge. I like to keep secrets and won't share them with anyone. Give you a thumbs up. Keeping secrets. Sounds good. Okay, equipment. So equipment, we're going to start with like a adventure pack or whatever. Class equipment. So we're going to have chain mail. Uh, great sword. And then we'll just do a long bow for if you need any ranged. You can have that across his back. And axes for his pack. Character does not have any spells. Level one. Okay. Okay, apply changes. All right. So we're going to level you up to level three. So you get something called action surge where you can use a, another action in your turn. Those types of characters usually have deep thought and when, if they do speak, they're always blown away at what they know observer rather than yap at the mouth. Yeah. Like, um, Jay and silent Bob, right? When silent Bob actually speaks up, you're like, wait, what's he saying? What is it? Must be important. <laughs> okay. There we go. The level three fighter. You don't get any spells yet. All right, so there is another character. Elden Ostgood. Very cool. Sick. Armor 
class 16. Sweet. All right, cool. We got two characters. We got a fighter. We got a rogue. Um, I think I want to make just for fun. I kind of want to make a mate, like a sorcerer or something for funsies. Ugh. Unless anybody has anything specific they wanna they want me to make for them for the the viewer campaign. Um, let's see. Yeah, we need, uh, if we are going to make characters, we need some sort of, uh, caster for the, uh, the team. Maybe we'll make a cleric for funsies. What about a character that's a female half elf? She would be like a cleric, kind of edgy backstory. Lost her friends, lost her memory, but she's like super hot. Of course she's super hot. Of course you would have to say super hot. Um, let me see. Female. Half elf. Half elf can make it go a little bit weird though. Let's just do female elf. Tall and tall and thin, but muscular. Uh, long golden hair in braids. Wearing mm, armor with a robe and holding a mace and shield with a symbol on it in fantasy art style. She warps this god that no one likes. I was about to say, are there any females yet? Then when she speaks, oh boy. Orc Shaman. It's actually terrible in magic. Gets frustrated and bonks people in the head with a staff. That's a big club. We just have a change of heart and she dyes her hair white. Over through the campaign. Yeah, we'll see what it comes up with. All right, so. So a name for a female half-elf cleric. I'm gonna say something like. Leonis. Oops. Leonis. Uh, Leonis. Leonis Divinat. You can name her something like Heart, like Shallot Heart, Shadow Heart. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah, very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay.
Did I say a mace in one hand and a sword in the other? What did I say there? Oh, a maid in one hand. I It was a mistype. Dang it. I wondered why I was looking weird. Let's try that again. Female elf, tall, and thin but muscular, long golden hair and braids, wearing armor with a robe and holding a mace. A shield with a symbol on it. Um, background. It was like the elf name Arwen. Not everybody, um, not everybody thinks the way you do look, okay? I thought you were just being very original. Let's go through that bow's gate, 100%, yeah. Arwen is a nice name, there's no doubt. My first character was an elf, his name was Eridan. That's a nice uh, elfy name. I like it. That's better. That's a weird looking mace. He's got three hands there too. That's the one thing about AI, right? This one, this one, this is the one right here. If this wasn't messed up here, I kind of like this one, but this one is pretty cool. Let's do the bottom left, the variation of the bottom left one. See what it comes up with. Shadow Baby's life. Shut up. Everybody from Dark Titan Theorem was my Wood Elf on Dragon Age. Oh, Dragon Age! How I loved that game. So good. So good. All right, let's see what it comes up with with the variations. Hmm. Kind of like this one. It's just a shame there's a sword going through the bottom of the shield. But I guess it doesn't really matter. Arnell meaning princess. Arnell the language of elves. Oh, look a fogger. Arnell, okay. Arnell. Maybe it's attached to her waist and she reverse grips that sword. Yeah, could be. Attached to her wrist. Oh. Hmm. Let me just try something a little bit different. I'm not totally sold on that. Female elf. Tall and thin and muscular golden hair wearing. Chainmail. With a robe. With a hooded robe. A one hand. 
Rounded Mace. Shield. Holding a <clears throat> mace in one hand and shield. Large. Shield in the other. Um, Erden, Urban, nice. I can see that. Um, Panelsters of Muscular. Yeah, let's see with that. Let's see what we get there with the ant one. The force. <laughs> hmm. So your first ever character was homebrewed? Interesting. Interesting. Sometimes AI does a good job, sometimes not so much. Like the shield is attached to her hip. This one doesn't even have a hand. <laughs> I kind of like this one though. I kind of like this first one. Like I, li I like the hair and stuff on this one. But I don't like the fact that the shield is just stuck to her hip. So let's do variations of the first one, I guess. Yeah. You know, I like these better. Let's just redo it. Elf name for the kiddo. <sighs> do 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 do. Well, this is named. Servan, the FS on Dragon Age Origins. Servan, I like it. I like it. Ooh. Yo, I like this one. Oh, that's cool too. Okay, these ones are good. Any of these could work, really. Huh. Might need might need to, you guys to vote on this one. These these are all really good. Maybe the top right might be the one. Like I like I like all the the glowing and essence of magic behind this one, and I like the little tiny bit of cleavage. Um, this one looks like so armor plated, looks so cool, and this one like is just more rugged, right, with the rain in the background. Top right for your vote, fogger. Ooh, that double headed axe. Way better than Todd. <laughs> Carver for number two, really? That's awesome. Bottom right, Daniel says. Yeah, I do like the light behind her on this one. Like the, the plating, the armor plating on this one, I really like. 
Kind of looks like a cleric stick. Well, I think, as far as I'm aware, Fogger is the only female here right now. So let's do a variation of the top right. Because it'd probably be a good idea to use the opinion of the female for the female character. <laughs> Yeah, I, I if we could have like a more of a mace style weapon for her, that would be better. Because that one looks really thin with like a little spike on the end. I'd want her to have something a little bit heavier looking. See, it's kinda like meh. We'll see though. We'll see what it's see what it comes up with. Yeah, boys. Sit back for a minute. <laughs> Okay. Oh, let me open it. Browser. Hmm. So it did do a better weapon this time, for sure. But I kind of like that rain in the background type of situation. Hmm. Maybe the top right. If I chose a portrait background this time, yeah. We do it again with rain in the background and see. Let me see here. Let me try, oops. No, I feel now tall and thin. Let's go there, long golden hair. Braids were in channel and he had a robe holding a mace. Holding a, um. Let's do Warhammer, because it might Give us more of a solid weapon in the one hand, a large shield. And the other with a symbol on it. Let's do this. Let's do this. Standing in the rain, ready for battle. Let's do that. Let's see what it comes back with for that. Oh, I'm so ready for tomorrow night. Yeah. These guys better ask some awesome questions. Better, better. The stuff that happens better be. Yeah. I hope they don't just fixate on. Wait a second. Look at this broken bed. This kind of looks weird. Let's study the make of the wood and what generation of wood crafters made this bed. <laughs> There we go. Does, does she have a freaking... Does she have like a little microphone down here? Like, what is that? <laughs> it looks like she has a microphone. <laughs> That's a little bit out of place. Ooh, look at that Warhammer, though. This one looks kind of nice. I kind of like the... I like, I like the look on her face. Like, she's going to fuck someone up. Her arm's weird. This one, the arm is like bent backwards. I don't like that. Like if this didn't have a microphone thing here, then I would say this one. But it's literally looks like a microphone. That's so weird. Because <laughs> otherwise that one would be it for me. Variation of the top left. All right.
Actually, let's do a variation of the top right as well, just to see. Because they're both good. I'm curious if it makes her not look like she's 12. <laughs> I get, well, we could put in like middle aged. <laughs> I think it's just because elves naturally look younger. Because they don't age as quick. So I think that's why it's like. Ooh, yo. That's nice and edgy. Ooh, all of these could work. All of those look real good. Let me see the uh, let me see the uh the other options. Oh boy. Yeah, nice. This looks good. I don't know what this is. Some big scythe thing. That looks nice. Up left on both. This guy here and this guy here. Nice. Hmm. Hey, what's up, Big J? All right, so which one should we go for? This one's not holding a shield for some reason. Even though I specifically said. <laughs> what is she holding? A dagger? Yeah, she's missing her shield. Yeah. Yeah, I know. All three of them had a shield except for her. Which is weird. And the second set top right is good. This one here. Yeah. I just don't like that the shield is floating. Like I, I kind of like the bottom right on this one is good too. Like the look away, the hair going. Let's see on the first set. This one definitely not because the axe doesn't line up with where the handle is. I do like the look. Like the look like oh yeah, I'm going to I'm going to slaughter all these things. All right, I got to run. Have a good one. All right, take it easy, sir. Hmm. I think maybe we go with this one because I'm really when you look at the token that be moving around a lot It's more focused in on like the face, right? And if we have this part here, I think that looks really good Although that looks good too <laughs> Hmm So top left on group one or top left on group two. Group two, I think she looks a little bit more mature. With the dress and everything. Bad to choose. First set, top left. This one? All right, let's do it. Let's uh, do it. Yeah. All right. All right, let's make a token.
Okay, downloads. So I've been starting a new workout and getting things handed off. Real jobs, life has been crazy. Oh, all good, man. All good, brother. All right, so let's get the art in here. And then the token. All right, so we're gonna create this next time because I get ready for work, but we've got RNL, Divinat, ready to go. Uh, we're just gonna make her cleric. So wrap it up there, guys. She's cool looking, very cool. I like it a lot, good choices. Good choices. You guys, thanks for hanging out. I appreciate it. Um, we'll be back tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. EST. And then, of course, tomorrow night, put it in your mother calendar. 7.30 p.m. EST is Redditus, our D&D campaign. We'll see you tomorrow night. You better be there. If you can't be there tomorrow morning, be there tomorrow night. Um, all right. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.